Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Sound Bites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we may rejoice with you and pray with you. And if you would, please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you in the name of Jesus and thank you for the many blessings that you have showered upon us. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace and for the Holy Spirit that ministers to us and teaches us. And now, Father, as we we prepare our hearts now to receive from you instructions and from your Holy Spirit instructions as we read your word and study it together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so I stated last week, the last time we were together in Sound Bites, that we would begin our study today with uh, letters that John wrote, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. But before we begin that, I would like to give you a little background as I have uh, discerned it in studying about these letters. It is generally accepted that the Apostle John wrote these letters and that they were written in, a, in and around uh, A.D. 90 and were written from the city of Ephesus. As you may recall, when Jesus was on the cross, he looked at John and at his mother and said, John, behold your mother, and looked at his mother and said, behold your son. And it's believed then that uh, John took Mary into his home and cared for her for the rest of her life. And it's also accepted that sometime after the Jesus' ascension into heaven, that John moved with Mary to the city of Ephesus, and he lived there <clears throat> and ministered in and around Ephesus. And as I said earlier, it is believed that John wrote these letters around A.D. 90. And this was perhaps 60 years after the birth of the church there in Jerusalem. And so the letters would have been written to perhaps second and third generation Christians. The commentaries seem to think that because of this, the enthusiasm of being a Christian had waned somewhat and Christians were beginning to accept or to live the worldly way of life as, an, as normal. That showed in their way of life. In other words, I think <clears throat> that they did not stand out as being different. And people watching them would not necessarily know that they were Christian. Therefore, perhaps part of the reason for writing these letters was to counter that assumption and stress that the Christian way of life was different. Stressing that Jesus said that we are in this world, but we, were, we are not of the world. Our life must reflect a Christ-like life. Another thought about the writing of the letters was to counter false teachings that were beginning to crop up within the church. And you may recall that as we studied Paul's letters that he often gave instructions to the churches about how to deal with Gnosticism and false teachings that were trying to destroy the church. And also apparently there were Jews living in that area who were spreading false teachings about Jesus as being the Messiah and trying to persuade the Christians that they needed to be circumcised and live according to the law of Moses, in order to become a Christian. So John is setting the record straight concerning this. <clears throat> These letters do not have the normal opening or closing, such as Paul's letters does, and you may have realized that as you were, were reading these. And because of that, it is not necessarily easy to determine to whom the letters were written, but the commentaries seem to think that the letters were written to the church in Ephesus and also to be read to churches in that immediate area, that being Asia Minor. So with that background, let us open our Bibles to 1 John 
chapter 1, and we will read the first four verses. So chapter 1 of 1 John, verse 1. <clears throat> That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at with our and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, and we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim it to you, the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you, what we have seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. I would also like to read this from the Amplified Translation because it has some uh, phrases in it that explains a little bit about <clears throat> what we just read. So chapter 1, verse 1. We are writing about the word of life in him who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard, whom we have seen with our own eyes, whom we have gazed upon for ourselves and have touched with our own hands. And he's talking there about Jesus. And the life and aspect of his being was revealed and made manifest and demonstrated. And we saw as eyewitnesses and are testifying to and declaring to you the life, the eternal life in him who already existed with the Father and who was actually made visible, was revealed to us, his followers. What we have seen and ourselves heard, we are telling you so that you too may realize and enjoy fellowship as partners and partakers with us. And this fellowship that we have which is a distinguishing mark of Christians, is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And now we are writing these things to you that our joy in seeing you included may be full and that your joy may be complete. And you may recognize that uh, this, the beginning of this letter is much like the beginning of the, letter, of the gospel that John wrote. The, in chapter 1 of his gospel, and I would like to read the first, th first 14 verses of the gospel. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God from the beginning. And John is talking about here Jesus being the Word, that he was with God from the very beginning. And then in verse 3 he says, Through him all things were made, or through Jesus all things were made. Without him Nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John, and he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world and was made through him. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came that it might he came to that which was his own. In other words, he came to the Jewish nation, but his own did not receive him. Yet all who received him to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent or of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And in both the gospel and in the writing of the letter, the letters, John is emphasizing the fact that Jesus was from the beginning and that he always existed and that nothing was created without him. And John says, I know this because I fellowshiped with him. I saw him. I walked with him. 
I know what I'm talking about, and I want you to be as excited about the good news as I am. John may have sensed that their zeal for the Christian life was waning and that he wanted them to be on fire for Christ. Perhaps John could have written this letter to any of the churches today. He may have written this letter to counter the false teachings that were being proclaimed by Gnostics and, or Jews or false prophets. He wanted his hearers to know that Jesus came in the flesh, lived among the people and fellowshiped with them. And then in verse two, John says, the life appeared and we have seen it and testified to it. We proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and appeared to us. John wanted them and also us to understand that Jesus was the Messiah, that he came just as it was prophesied that he would come, and that he lived and dwelt among us, and he was human as well as divinity. And <clears throat> the Son of God, and that by accepting Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God, we will have eternal life with him. He concludes verse 4 with, we write this to make our joy complete. I believe also that he means to make his readers and hearers joy complete. Our joy, yours and mine, is complete when we fellowship with other Christians and with Jesus as we study and learn of the teachings of Jesus and bask in his love. Well, I have enjoyed sharing with you this morning, and if you have any comments or different ideas about these verses, please send them to the St. Paul's email address, and I will address them. I would love to hear from you because this is the, one of the ways that I learn also is by hearing comments and hearing thoughts of others. So would love to hear from you. So have a wonderful time with the Lord, and may the Lord continue to richly bless you and Go in peace and in the love of God.